Welcome to the Bushido Gang. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Attack on Samurai, bringing you my first video of 2021. So, um, in this vid, I will be discussing um, some matches from my Discord. So, um, in my Discord, there's currently a tournament going on. Um, so I'm holding an ADV OU tournament, uh, just a standard, just a standard tournament with, you know, the standard smoke on rules and all that. So, um, so yeah, so I wanted to, so I wanted to actually review a couple matches that happened in this tournament, you know, just get my thoughts about them and, uh, basically just review the matches and, you know, how I thought each player, um, did. I'm, I'm also in this tournament as well. So, uh. So yeah, it's a pretty small one. We only I was only able to get like ten people to to actually play. So I was happy to I was happy to at least get it started. Um, I do plan on doing more tournaments in the future. So if you would like to join my Discord and would like to participate in these tournaments, uh, the link will be down in the description. Um, also, if you uh, if you do think if you think that my advice um, or just my review is useful to you, uh, please you know make sure to leave a like and comment and feel free to subscribe as well. Um, so yeah, anyways, this is the first game. So the first game that I wanted to talk about is um with is with um Everglade Glade and Spooky Z. So um just a little bit of background for both of these guys. So Spooky so Spooky Z, um he's actually a prodigy uh to the current Gen 8 metagame. Um so he is uh he's pretty good. Um and I think it's actually very useful useful for him to play some old generations just because I think that'll actually build up his um build up his skills um just in like older gens, you know. So um so yeah, and then with uh Galade, Galade is more of a VGC player, and I've also, you know, like collab with him a couple times already. So um so basically, um these two are pretty much like polar opposites. Again, he's again Galate's more of, is more of a VGC player, but he also wants to learn singles as well. And Spooky Z, well, like I said, he's just a prodigy at the uh, at the Gen 8 metagame right now. So I think it's I think it's gonna be a pretty cool. Or I mean, I thought it was a very interesting game to review, um, just because they're both like polar opposites of each other, and they're both new to the metagame. So um, so yeah, this is actually their first time playing ADV. So um, so yeah, let's talk about the match, shall we? So, turn one, Spooky leads with, um, hold up, wait, okay, I can't, let me actually, okay. So, Spooky led with Zapdos, and Galley led with Donphan. Um, now, I want to go back to that turn. So, I think Zapdos versus, versus Don lead. This lead right here, well, for one, for one, Donphan isn't really, like, a common mon to see in ADVOU. Um, it's more, it's very, I'd say it's very niche. Um, like, Donphan really only, can really only do, like, one thing, and that's be a defensive wall. Um, there are, I guess you could argue that you could make it, like, Spadef as well, but defensively, it's just better in taking on, uh, stuff like Salamence and taking on, uh, Metagross as well. Like, a hard, like, just physical attackers, it can take on very well, and then just dish back a lot of damage with Earthquake, or even, like, Rock Slide, or HP for, or HP Rock, HP Flying. HP bug to deal with like Celebi so it's a very um it's a mod that only has like one or, I mean it's not it's a mod that can only deal with uh deal with physical attackers to the mo to the um to some extent it can just hit very hard um now with Zapdos versus Donphan uh this kind of lead right here isn't really in favor of of actually I would say it's not really in favor of um of Gallade because again like I said Donphan doesn't usually run like a rock move um granted some of them do run like Tashi to deal with stuff like Zapdos and other flying types as well since they can't really hit them um but I think in this position um I'd say that Spooky Z actually have more of an advantage here because um because usually Zapdos carry something to deal with ground types like HP Ice or HP Grass so this actually threatens out Donphan in my opinion um, however, uh, Spooky Z actually switches and goes in the pert and brings in La and then uh, Helga brings in, or I mean Galley brings in the Lax um, on the switch in. So I think he made a good play switching out Zapdos going into the uh, or switching out um, the um, 
the Dawn fan going into the Snorlax. I think that was a good play to catch Thunderbolt. Um, because outside of Sand, uh, Snorlax can actually take hits, can actually take, can decently take a hit from Zapdos. Not like super well, but it can take it a lot better than it being in Sand. So, um, so I do think that, uh, that Gally made a good play switching out, switching out right there. Um, Good play scouting for HP Grass slash HP Ice, and good play just, like, taking the hit in general with Lax. So, um, and I think Spooky tried to play off that, uh, maybe. Or, that's what it looked like when he switched into the, uh, in the Pert. So, with Pert being in here, Pert could actually do a lot, but he switches again, so he double switches. So, it's just a whole lot of double switching right now. <laughs> like, so early on in the game, too. Um, so yeah, he double switches out the about out the pert and then brings in the uh, Celebi. So Celebi against Zapdos is pretty interesting. Um, Zapdos can do a, can do a majority of things. Um, it's honestly, if not one of the best versatile mons in ADV. Actually, no, no, I, I'd say it's definitely one of the best mons in ADV, just because there's so many things that Zapdos can do. Um, so it's a very unpredictable. It's, it can be a very unpredictable mon, um, but. Most of the time, I'm not gonna say most of the time. It's, it's very unpredictable. It could do a lot of things. It could be modest. It could be mixed. It could be defensive. Um, it could be offensive with like baton passing and, and such. It could be a phaser. Like there's so many things Zapdos can do. So it kind of just. So I mean, both both their Zapdos is kind of just like can do a lot for each other. So um, so yeah, this position right here, Zapdos versus Celebi. Um, this could be this guy the leech seed or whatever. So he does go for the leech seed, but he misses. Um, and then, uh, Gally goes for the Tonsic, actually lands right there on the next turn, and then here comes the Leech Seed, so they both get something off right there. Um, now, Tonsic Zapdos is pretty, could actually be pretty deadly. Um, Tonsic could usually mean that it's, like, some kind of bulky Zapdos variant, or it could be, like, an offensive Zapdos. Um, personally, for me, when I use Tonsic on Zapdos, I'm usually running it as, like, a defensive one. Um, just because defensively, Zapdos can, uh, cause I mean, like, um, cause I mean, with Toxic plus Thunderbolt, you can wear down a lot of things very well, or very, uh, very easily. Um, again, Toxic to deal with the ground types, and also can catch Pert, too. Um, but if you're running it on a more offensive Zapdos, so if you have, like, Toxic, Thunderbolt, HP, Grass, then you really start pressuring down, uh, the ground types very, dip very hard. Um, so, yeah. Um... Excuse me, so yeah. So now with Celebi getting Toxic, um, but getting the Leech Seed off, um, Spooky can actually get some advantage here and can switch out if he wants to, but um, he actually goes for the Psychic instead on the incoming Lax. So that's a, that was a good play to switch again. Again, to remove the Leech Seed and also to switch into Lax to take whatever Celebi could do. Uh, now this does force Celebi out, so he goes for the Baton Pass to bring in the Starmie. I don't really agree with this play right here. Again, they're both new, but... I think this play switching out Celebi to bring in Pert. I think going Pert might have been a little bit set. It would have would have been a little bit better here. Um, that's that's just what I think. Uh, cause his uh his Swampert was actually the way the way it seemed. It seemed like it was a more defensive variant. Um, or it seemed to be very defensive, in my opinion. So um, well not in my opinion, but uh. But I'm saying that it seemed to be very defensive, so you could probably go. So you probably could have went pert freely there to take whatever the last could do. Um, yeah, going Starmie just is is very weird because last can do so many things. Um, Snorlax in ADV has a couple roles it can do. Um, it could be a curse sweeper um, with like curse, well, like curse body slam, um, or it could be a boomer with like curse body slam, earthquake, and then self destruct, or curse, or curse like shadow ball. Body slam, self destruct. Like, there's a lot that Lax can do. Um, and Lax really doesn't mind a Starmie, to be honest. Um, especially without Sand being up, too. So, Lax is going to sit up here on the Starmie. Um, in case in case he wanted to stand with Celebi anyway. He just switched out Celebi here. Or bring Celebi in right now. And Spooky doesn't really know what to do against this, as it says in the chat. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Um, in this position right here where Celebi is in on, on a, a Curse Lax at plus two, there really isn't much you can do, especially because the Lax could potentially have, like, Shadow Ball, which means that, you know, Celebi can die in two hits. Um, so the only thing he could really do is go for Elite Seed to wear this down, or if he has something, 
um, in the back that could actually pressure lax. There's a lot of ways to pressure lax. Um, you have so you have like boomers like in like Metagross and also stuff like uh, or I mean just boomers in general. So again, boomers, um, Metagross, opposing Snorlax, um, or just like a hard physical attacker um, can definitely wear down lax pretty well. Um, and Spooky actually has that um, in a couple mons actually. So. Unfortunately, though, he's going to be forced to take the damage from Lax. So he goes for the Leaf Seed instead, and Shadow Ball almost KOs him. Now, if this was an offensive Celebi, this would have died. But because he's defensive, he could actually take the Leaf He could actually take the Shadow Ball very well. Um, and also, uh, to be... And also, like, both of them don't really know the mechanics yet about ADV. Like, for example, Shadow Ball being physical in this generation instead of it being special in in future gener in future generations uh they both do not know that at this point um but again it's a learning lesson for both of them so they're they're both like learning from each other um so yeah the least c com um, switch uh comes out but then he switches in the in the men's there on the baton pass so or i mean okay okay so <laughs> so let's see okay so turn eight lead c comes down shadow ball comes out but then he switches out. So he switches out the lax and brings in mints. Um This is this is interesting. Um the switch in the mints. Or I mean this yeah, the switch in the mints from that. I don't I don't think he really lost much by going for Shadow Ball again. Um in in favor of Galilee. I think Galilee actually made a better or I think Galilee could have just stayed in and just kept going for the damage there. Like he lost nothing, honestly. I think if I were in his position, I probably would have just body slammed on the switch in or just kept going for Shadow Ball just because like plus two lax already puts on so much pressure on his team and and they both don't know what it, what they what either of them have like um like I think maybe I think I think Galley made a safer play to switch out in case Spooky had a steel type. So maybe that's why he wanted to switch there in the first place. Um, but again, I think body slam at plus two is still going to be, it's still going to do a decent chunk to even the steel deck, to even the steel set that could come in. Um, but yeah, uh, Zapdos comes in on the baton pass as the Mence comes in. Um, now what he does is switches out the lax and it comes a T wave from the Zapdos. So T wave on, or T wave on the, uh, on lax is, uh, is okay, but it's not really like necessary. He does switch out though. And he's at plus, and he's at minus one. So, um, in case you don't know about how Baton Pass works, uh, for you guys that want to get into ADV or just into origins in general, um, Baton Pass allows you to get off a lot of uh, momentum. So you can just switch out a mon uh, right off bat to switch into something else that could take on the opposing mon, um, or to gain, or to gain like a, um, or to gain momentum um, on whatever your opponent switches into. Or just to take a hit from whatever your opponent switches into. Or whatever your opponent uh, goes for. So, the Baton Pass. Well, for one, well, for one um, got to take into account that the, that the Baton Pass from uh, Zapdos is also taking the minus one. Um, is also taking the minus one uh, from the Mints. So, the minus one from the Mints being passed on to Tar from the Baton Pass does mean that tar is going to be a lot weaker so that means that whatever this t tar goes for it's not going to do a lot of damage um so so while he can at least get some damage off it's not going to really help him too much um but yeah the baton the body slam comes down which is a crit as well um crit doesn't really matter too much but it does kind of sting a little bit um i think spooky made a right play to go for focus punches because it puts on a lot of pressure in general um but definitely in terms of like who's taking the most damage it look it seemed to it seems to be spooky at this point um but yeah focus punch on on donfin is really do too much as donfin like i said is a physical wall so it can take physical hits very well and physical targets hard wall by uh, by donfin as well so um so yeah so he switches out brings in starmie um goes for the toxic there which was a good play um, from, uh, from help, from, uh, from Galley. I also think he could have Earthquake there. Earthquake also would have, would have given him a lot of, um, 
would have given him would have given him a lot of momentum but i guess tantic is okay in case he wanted to go into zapdo so i respect both i respect that play as well um so yeah starmie's here toxic and everything um but because of natural cure starmie can switch out for free and avoid the tantic and then doug comes in on the lax okay i don't think this was a bad play i don't think this was a bad play i mean he he had to make the play i think spooky had to make the play um it was a pretty aggro play um, he's able to trap the Lax, which means he can actually 1v1 it, and because Lax is also paralyzed, that means that, um, that means that, um, it's actually in Spooky's favor, uh, to deal, to, to a kill the Lax. Um, so, if he gets the full pair, then you can actually get rid of the Lax right off that. So, on this turn, he goes for the Earthquake, and if he gets the full pair, he can knock it out, and he does knock out the Lax after the full pair, so there goes Lax. And now Spooky could actually keep his Doug for later, in case... Maybe Spooky has like a has a steel in the back or a tar, so now he could bring in the uh, bring in Starmie in case the star in case the part wanted to go for like an ice move or something or a water move. So good plan on that on his part for doing that. And comes Celebi now as he goes for the protect. So protect there um, does reveal that his part is most likely a defensive variant. So that means that this part can get that that means that this part hard walls tar. Because, again, the tar seems to be more physically oriented, so it's probably going to be like a BKC tar. Um, just like, four, just four attack, t just four attack T-tar. Um, with a, um, with focus punch without sub. So, um, so yeah. Um, protect there. And now what Spooky could do is his baton pass out, where he could go for a lead seat. He goes for the recovery instead. Uh, recovery isn't bad either in case um or it wasn't bad either you know because pert doesn't want to stay in on celebi celebi definitely gets um definitely can destroy perch like all very like all uh variants of them um for the most part um so yeah i guess recovery off there and now what he could do is baton pass out or he just hard switch does hard switch and go into starmie and then here comes the dd from mince okay so the dd was a pretty raw play <laughs> it was a pretty raw play um, but I think, uh, I think Gally made the right play because, um, why would Celebi ever stay in on Mints, you know? Um, so, like, Mints, Mints in most cases can deal with Celebi, um, except for, like, Mixed Variants. Mixed Variants don't really deal with Celebi that well, especially if Celebi's are, especially if Celebi's gonna be, like, the, um, it's gonna be a Calm Mind variant, um, then it can deal with it very well, um, yeah, mixed bends doesn't really deal with Celebi that well, um, but a physically oriented one, like something like a DD Mints, can kind of deal with it, um, or can deal with it a little bit better than mixed mints or than mixed mints. Granted, mixed mints is definitely the better like variant to be using, um, just not in general, but like, um, well, I guess I guess you could no, I'm not gonna say in general. It's it's good though. Mixed mints is very good, um, but. But DD Mints is also pretty good as well. But DD Mints can work better on teams that actually have support uh, for it. So again, if you have something like Mag pair with DD Mints, you can actually deal with your you can actually deal with Steel types, which makes it easier for Mints to uh, to sweep through. So um, so yeah. Unfortunately, at plus one, Starmie is going to die to a um, it's going to die to HP flying. So uh, so he's going to sack the Starmie here. So Starmie's going to go down. The crit did not matter at all. Um, especially if he was adamant on this uh, mints, which most which most mints are in this generation, because you don't really need to go jolly with uh, with mints. You want to actually get the most amount of damage off with it. So adamant is usually the way to go, because um, adamant can kill off a lot of things or can kill off things a lot better than a um than a um yeah adamant can kill off things a lot a lot better than like a jolly variant. So um. So yeah, Starmie going down is actually pretty bad for Spooky because Spooky actually, um, Spooky actually could have done a lot with Starmie, um, but to be fair, he didn't really have a good, no, he definitely had a, he definitely could have went Pert there. I think Pert was a better switch in, um, I honestly think Pert was a better switch in than Starmie, um, but to be fair, um, how could Spooky know what kind of mints this was? He can't really tell. Um, besides, you know, like switching out to see, but, but yeah, if he was like a mix, if this was like a mix mints, um, I definitely think mix mints would have done, uh, would have done a decent chunk of work here. Um, most likely, but, um, but yeah, so as you can see, 
Uh, the Mess is at plus one. I would still think that Pert would have been the better option because Starmie definitely can deal with uh can deal with this team offensively because um you have Pump or Ice Beam to deal with uh to deal with Dawnfin and same with Zapdos. Especially out, especially with Sand Up, Zapdos can get worn down pretty fast by Ice Beam from Mints or from uh from Starmie. And um and plus again Starmie can just hit hard on a uh, Pert anyway. And same with men. So I do think that him sacking Starmie might have been a uh, definitely might have been a misplay there. So again, if I was in his position, I would have went Pert there. He brings in Pert now, but it's kind of too late. I mean, it's not really because Pert can still do a lot of uh, can still pressure him anyway because Pert can ice beam um, if he does have it. Which which him switching out kind of shows it, and he goes for pump instead, which isn't a bad play either. Um, but I guess maybe he thought that Pert that he go and Pert or something, but. Might have just clicked it just cuz, but I think Ice Beam would have been better either way, but Pump is still good. And comes Celebi here on the HP Grass. Um, so, so Celebi can easily wall this variant of Zapdos. Unless Saphir is toxic, but even then it could just switch out any it could just switch out anyway. So uh so yeah, so the HP grass isn't gonna do too much damage to Celebi. And now what um what Spooky could do is just go for a lead seed as he does go for the lead seed there to get some health back. So he's gonna lead seed the Zapdos, get some health. And now what he could do is baton pass out to get some uh, to pass the recovery into something else. Um, but I do believe, yeah, he does go for that. So he does go for that, and he can switch out and go into tar. Um, so he switches out tar, I guess the recovery off. Now in a position like this, this actually isn't bad for uh, for Spooky um, because there's a lot he could do against the Zapdos. Um, for one, he could focus punch on the switch in because Zapdos doesn't want to stay in. But also, uh, but also for Galley, he could just sack the Zapdos because I don't think he really needs Zapdos. Uh, yeah, he doesn't. Well, again, depending on what that last one is, he doesn't really need Zapdos that much. Um, but, but yeah, he does choose to actually switch out here. So he switches out. And uh, Spooky switches out as well um, on the Pert switch. I think that was a good play because, again, Pert walls uh, Tar very well. But, again, I do think that for Spooky, Focus Punch would have been better just because that allows him more... That just gives him more... Um, that just gives him damage on the Pert or slash the Dawn fan. Um, so, so yeah. Um, anyway, Celebi's in here now, and he could just go for Elite if he wants to. So, he is going to go for that. In comes an Ice Beam. Ice Beam doesn't really do too much as this Celebi is very bulky. Um, so with Leech Seed plus Recovery, or plus Recovery, um, he could just, you know, switch out again. Or he could just recover right here. And he actually does do just that. So now the Mens is back. And Mens is going to be putting on some pressure. Uh, so now what Spooky chooses to do is hard switch into Perks. That was a good play this time. So now, um, so now Galate's going to go for the DD. And he can go for the, uh, get the damage off our hard switch. Um, I think in his position, he kind of just has to sack Mints. Or actually, no, he could keep this because it still pressures the Celebi. And I think he actually wants to get rid of Celebi so he could win with Dawn plus, uh, plus Pert. Um, which, by the way, the Pert is going to be pretty important a little bit later on. Um, as again, like I said, it walls his tar very easily. So... So what, uh, so what Gallade does here is that he actually goes for the HP flying and he gets a crit. Now that crit is very huge. Um, a crit from, a crit on this kind of, on this variant of Pert. Um, again, just assuming that he is defensive on this. Um, that usually does, I believe, around 60%. So let's see. So Swampert versus Pert. So again, let's say he's the, he's the standard defensive set. So plus one DD does 37 to 44%. Now if he's offensive, um, let me find the offensive one. If he's the standard offensive one, then it still doesn't kill him. Um, and he can still, you know, ice beam it and kill it. So in the position that he's in, like he's still, um, oh wait, sorry. <laughs> he's still like a, a, um, he's still not in a bad, um, I mean, that definitely hurt him a lot uh, from that crit there. So, um, now his perk can't really, can't really switch into anything. Um, but yeah, again, regardless if it was a crit and it, like, if he was, if this was, you know, max, I mean, with it being plus one, um, 
if this was defensive, then the crit definitely mattered. If it was offensive, the crit mattered as well. Um, if he was offensive, I definitely think the crit. I think the crit would have killed. Um, actually, so let's see. Uh, the crit. Yeah, the crit would have killed if he was offensive. Um, but since he was defensive, that definitely mattered a lot. Um, actually, no, that was a roll, wasn't it? Hold on, let me go. No, wait, it wasn't a roll. So defensive perk then. Um, so yeah, the, the the standard defensive one with that crit. Um, no, he might have been. No, I think he was offensive. He was offensive perk. Um, but he might have had some HP investment. Maybe. Huh. If it did 99, then... Yeah, he might have... Oh, wait, no. Wait a minute. Um, Because he already put, like, the defensive... The calc in there. He was, like, 124, I think. Or 128. 128. Um, yeah. Okay. So, that's better. So he actually had like a high, a high crit rate or a high crit roll. So um, so yeah, that definitely mattered a lot. You can still get some recovery though. But yeah, as you can see, you already put the calc there. Um, so now Kingdra comes in here. Kingdra is very, it's very weird. Um, on a team like this, you kind of wouldn't expect it, but I guess it's, it's actually pretty cool though. Um, which means that you know his, his team didn't really need like a tar. Um, and I guess you know Donovan kind of gave that roll over over tar. Um, so yeah, Kendra being in here means that, um, means that potentially, um, this could just sweep, honestly, um, yeah, this could potentially sweep, um, but the one thing that, uh, Gallade has to be aware of is the Doug. If Doug comes in, it could actually trap the Kendra, and then Kendra's pretty much gone, but then from that point, um, he still has to worry about some other things. Also, this Kingdra, if it gets a crit on Selby with Ice Beam, uh, then it's definitely over. So here comes the Ice Beam. Gets a lot of damage off, no freeze either on the switch in. So um, now what he could do is go for a sub as Spooky goes for a recovery to keep Selby healthy. So he goes for the recovery there, um, tries to keep it as healthy as possible. Um, Ice Beam comes down and it's another crit. <laughs> so um, Psychic comes down, is able to break the sub, but because of that, um, crit that's gonna kill off the Celebi. He could dug the Kanger now, so now it's gonna be three, three to four. But like I said, like I said in the beginning, Tar doesn't do anything against these two. These two hard wall the hard wall physical tar. So um I do think that if Spooky got off one focus punch, like if he focus punched on the Zapdos switching, he might have gotten something more here. But because of that, because of that, um because of those things not happening, also the crit as well, he's in a tough spot. Also, the toxic miss is rare, is pretty huge as well. He could he could go for the HP ice here, um, as he is gonna do that. Does a lot, but it doesn't kill. And toxic comes down, which means that now, um, what he could do with the um, what he could do with the with the pert is he could just protect stall it now, um, as he is going to proceed to do that in the next couple turns. So HP ice doesn't kill off the dawn fan, but he can go Zapdos here. On the HP guys, and he's gonna let the Zapdos go. So he does sack his own Zapdos, and now it's Pert. So, um, if this Zapdos was HP Grass, this would have been a much different. This would have been this uh, Zapdos would have been in a much more favorable spot. Um, but because he's HP Ice, um, that means that this Pert is going to be able to wall it completely now. Um, especially with the Toxic on the uh, on Zapdos as well. So I do think that Galley made a good job going for Toxic to wear this down for his Pert. Um. Granted, I will say that Galley got very lucky with some crits here. <laughs> Those crits kind of put him this, kind of put him in this position. Um, but yeah, that HP Ice, um, or I mean, but yeah, that Toxic is really gonna hurt him. He's gonna sack the Pert here to the Ice Beam, and now all he can really do is just Earthquake with Tar, and that's all he can do at this point. Um, but yeah, Physical Tar doesn't do anything to Pert. It's like as you can see, that damage is doing nothing. And he can just protect stall to just get even more health back. So he is going to do just that. And this will be going off for a couple more turns. He goes for an earthquake again, does 28%. He's going to try and put this into the range where he could dug the uh, dug per potentially and then maybe kill it off with Zapdos. But even still, he'd have to get like a really good roll for that to kill. Um, now, after the next earthquake, he'll be at 45% or 42%. Uh, with lefties, he'll be at 47%. Um, 
So let's see. Let's do some calcing. So defensive pert versus uh, Deltrio. Uh, that doesn't really. That's not really in Deltrio's favor usually. Um, earthquake does 37 to 44 percent. Um, now I'm assuming that his Doug was actually adamant. So let's see. If he's adamant, then he actually has a pretty decent shot to kill. But then you have to factor in. Um, let's see. You have to factor in the protect as well. So protect coming off here after this. Uh, oh, 48. My bad. So not 47. Um, I got the roll wrong. But yeah, protect after that. Um, if this is adamant Doug, then then this would do after the after the um after the protect. It would do 40, 41 to 46 percent, right? 49 percent. So um, after that, he's at 54 percent. So if he's adamant, then earthquake can do up to 48 percent, which means that uh, which means that spooky actually still had a shot here uh, to kill off the pert. But he's actually jolly, and that's not gonna kill, and that's gonna knock out the uh, the pert. Or I mean, that's gonna knock out Doug with the hydro pump. Um. Don't think Hydro Pump was, you know, worth it there. I think it would have Ice Beam. Ice Beam would have killed it. Um, again, assuming that Spooky was running a, um, was running the standard Dotrio set. Um, or was running the, um, the, the set with, uh, you know, 4 attack HP and then, you know, max, max attack, max speed, Jolly. If he was running that set, then Ice Beam would have killed either way. Um, but yeah, um, now the perk can just freely wall him. Um, so because of sand plus toxic, it's just not that good for, uh, for spooky right now. And also with that HP ice, it's not going to even kill it at the range he's at now. Cause he'll be at 30 after this or almost 30. Um, at least on the switch in anyway, he'll be at 30 or 34. So let's do some calcing. Um, let's see, let's check that Zapdos set. So Zapdos, uh, I can't spell Zapdos. Zapdos, uh, standard offensive. So again, if this was, um, if the defensive pert uh, was the um if he was running hp grass this would have killed him or i mean he could have easily um dealt with this but because he was not that variant hp ice is just not going to do enough but let's check let's actually just check the calc anyway for hp ice just so i can show you the damage um so hp ice pin power ice pin power ice does yeah, 19 to 22 percent. So that is not going to be enough for him, and this is going to be the game for uh, for Spooky. So, uh, so yeah, only does up to 23 percent, and that's going to be GG to Gallade. So, um, I do think this is a learning experience for both players. Um, again, they they said they both never played ADV, and I think this is actually like pretty good experience for both of them. Um, again, the crits definitely mattered a lot here. Again, the crit from the um. But the crit on Starmie didn't matter at all, because again, like I said, the, um, it always did like 80, well, actually, I can show you the calc anyway, let's see. So, Starmie, um, also another thing to note is that DD Mints is very weak, um, <laughs> like, it's, it's one of the weaker Dragon Dance sweaters, in my opinion, um, unless you have, like, the right support with it, but yeah, as you can see, um, plus one, the plus one DD doesn't even kill it, <laughs> like, that's sad, that's very sad. Um, yeah, plus one, Dragonus never kills, um, unless you're in sand, if you're in sand, then it can kill after the sand chip, um, but yeah, it can, can, it can kill after sand chip, but I think it's a roll though too, no, nah, it's not, it's not, it's not a roll, never mind, <laughs> you have to get like a high roll for it to, uh, for that then, uh, cause sand does like 6%, I think, 6 or 7%, um, but yeah, um, the Starmie was at 80%, so this was always gonna kill, so that crit didn't matter, like I said, um, if he was like a defensive variant, um, which isn't really that common, um, or if he was like a bulky Starmie, then he might have been able to lift the hit. Um, if he was like a rapid spin variant, then it could have lifted it. Um, even though this variant isn't really like common in the metagame. Um, yeah, it's not really, this set isn't really that common on Starmie. Um, but yeah, um, the crit definitely mattered there, and same with the crit on the Kingdra, or the, uh, the crit from the Kingdra too. Um, those all mattered quite a lot. So, um, so yeah, unfortunately it didn't really work out for Spooky, but I think this was still a pretty close game though, especially for these players being new. Like they both played very well for newer, for like new players to this metagame. So I have to say congratulations to both of them, honestly. Um, but yeah, so 
I'm going to talk about this game now. I s might have enough time to do another game, so I'll just do one more game, and then that'll probably be that for the vid. So I was debating on rec on talking about either this game or my game with the with Ed, and I actually want to talk about my about this game right here. Um, this this game is against is actually Tyga versus um, Linus. Um, so Tyga, he's actually a more experienced ADV player. Oh, wow, Linus is a, a newer player to the ADV metagame. Um, so this match right here, this is actually game three of their match. Um, I wanted to record their game. I wanted to talk about their game three match because I think that this is actually their strongest match. Um, also, it, it was actually a, um, a series of three. Or, I mean, it was a best of three. So, um, so basically... Um, I think it was Tyga that won the first game, and then Linus won the second game. Um, and then, this is the game right here. So, um, so I want to talk about this one, you know, get my thoughts about it. And, uh, yeah. So, um, let's talk. So, turn one, Tyga leads with Titar as Linus leads with Skarmory. So, Skarmory versus Titar is a pretty interesting, um, it's pretty interesting. Um, usually Skarmory doesn't want to stay in on T-Tar because, you know, us, T-Tar can do a variety of things. Um, it could be mixed, it could be banded, um, it could be, like, four attack, physical, again, BK T-Tar, it could be, um, it could be, it could be Tyranoboa. Like, there's a lot that T-Tar is capable of doing in ADV, and it makes it, like, one of the, one of the best mods in ADV for that reason alone. It's just so versatile, it can do, it can just fit so many roles for a team. Um... So like I said, uh, this T-Tar could do whatever it wants. And Linus could choose to go for a spike here, but the damage that comes out could actually hurt him depending on what kind of tar it is. So I do believe that he is going to go for the spike here on the Skarmory switch. So um, so that was actually, so he gets the spike there, which is good. Um, now uh, now Tyga chooses to go for go to his own Skarmory to get his own spike up. So they're both going to do just that. So spike comes down on the Gengar switch in. So Gengar comes in here. And Gengar could definitely do something, but he doesn't want to, you know, stay in here because the tar could be Pursuit. So he's going to switch out here, I believe. Or he could go for a burn to catch T-Tar. And I do believe he went for the burn here in case T-Tar came in. But um, Taiga made the made the play to catch it, to catch the burn in case that would happen. So that was a good play. Um, Moltres is actually pretty threatening to... Uh, it's actually pretty threatening in general. Um, and again, it's also just threatening against these two. So Linus is forced to switch how to go into his fire resist. Uh, which let's see what his fire resist is and it's gonna be T-Tar. So T-Tar comes in here and What Taiga does is go for the burn on T-Tar. So that was a really good play Uh burn in general is just good in case or is just good um from Moltres because you know You never know what this switching could be um Which is why like team preview um or which is why no team preview in gen 3 is Or in or in the old gens is just like so um It's just so interesting because you never know what your opponent is gonna have so it's always best to just you know make the safe play and just go for like a status move um or just like you know protect or something or just but usually just go for the status move in case you don't know what their what their mon could be on the switch so uh so burn was a good play you get catching tar catch whatever came in um so yeah so now uh with with t-tar getting burned um it means that lioness can't really do that much with t-tar uh, granted it depends on what kind of t-tar he is if he's running like a mixed one then he can't really do much because you know not, he can't break break a rock slide or anything um but if he's like a special tar it doesn't really hurt him that much but it does weaken him a lot because of burn plus the spike down too so yeah spike so yeah the burn's doing 12 percent and plus spike is well doing 12 too so it's really gonna hurt him he goes for the phasing and goes for aurora so aurora tar aurora on t-tar is actually pretty cool um i don't really like for me for me when i run t-tar i don't usually run aurora a lot uh, for me, I'm more inclined. I'm more inclined to go for like mixed tar, or like even some DD tars. Um, so Roar on T tar is something I'm not really too used to. Um, but it's pretty good because it does allow you to you know face things around and also get some chip on things too, paired with the spike down from Skarmory. So it makes it makes T tar pretty uh pretty aggro, um right off the bat. So um, so yeah. Um, now what he could do is switch out here. So he just switches out. So that tells me that his T-Tar can't really touch Skarmory that well. Um, so it must have been, like, it could be, like, a physical Tar. It, it probably is a physical Tar, um, due to the way he's playing around Skarmory. Um, like, 
There are some variants of, of T-Tar. I think the Roar variant sometimes run, can sometimes run Pursuit. Um, I might be thinking more GSE though, but um, I'm, I actually th I, th I actually think I might be getting GSC uh, T-Tar mixed up with the ADV T-Tar, because I know that um, I know that in eight, that in GSC some of them do run do run a uh, Roar to phase things around. Um, but some, but they also do run Pursuit as well. Um, so this t -tar could have been Pursuit, but it probably can't touch Skarmory that well. Maybe. Um, or maybe it really is just like a, I'm not too sure. But, uh, the Roar there, but the fact he switched out there means he can't touch Skarmory. So, goes for another spike on the Skarmory switch. So, um, we're on the Skarmory. So, uh, in comes Jolt here on the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt was a pretty wild play. Um, I think if I were in Linus's position, I think I would have went for a Wisp anyway. I think Wisp is still like, in, it's still like good in general. Granted, if if Moltres did come in, um, on the Wisp, I mean, it's fine. But at the same time, it kind of hurts him still because you know Tar would take more would take more spike damage, being up to like 24 now, and then with the with the burn as well, that's like almost 40 percent right out like right there so the taurus is getting more and more worn down and the jolteon is just going to add on that pressure as well so all linus can really do is try to go into like a wall that he has and the wall is going to be blissey so blissey is going to be his special wall he goes for the baton pass which is a great play which does allow taiga to get even more spike down so he can go for a third spike now um and the blissey is getting worn down by sand plus the uh Plus the chip from Drill Pack 2. So he goes for the Fire Blast there. Fire Blast on Blissey is very crazy. <laughs> like, I don't I don't usually see Fire Blast on Blissey. Um, especially on a team like this. Like, a team like this, I'd probably say is more... I, I'd probably say TSS. Like, it's, it's more like a balanced kind of team here. Um, so for me, seeing Fire Blast on Blissey is just kind of weird. Um, but it does work in Linus's favor because he's able to get a really good chunk on the Skarmory. Granted, it's not like, you know, enough because his Skarmory could potentially have protecting you and then, you know, get gets recovery back right off, or gets recovery back. Um, but he'll be back to 48%, um, almost 49% actually. So, those in the Tar there on the next Fire Blast or in case he wanted to switch or something. But, uh, definitely Linus makes the right play to switch there. So now he can go for a second spike here as he is going to do that on the Skarmory. So he goes to second spike, so good play getting the second one up. Now he can go for a third one if he wants to, and he does choose to go for a third. So now all the spikes are down, and he has no way to, uh, like, phase around. Or not phase, to, um, to spin. Um, again, we're adding on to the spike damage now. So I think this is, again, 12. Uh, again, 12, 12, 12. That's... 36% um so 36% on the pert is gonna hurt him 36% on tar is gonna hurt him even more um 36 on blissey is gonna hurt a lot as well so um so now what they can both do is phase and they are gonna start phasing so yeah oh wait hold up wait I'm wrong so it's not 24% or so it's not 25% or 36% so I I'm definitely getting this wrong I think it's Oh, wait, no, no, Spike is 8%, isn't it? Or maybe it is 12. Or maybe, like, the numbers divide or something. I, I swear I thought it was, I swear I thought it was more than 25%. My fault, my fault, people, my fault. So, never mind, it's actually just 25% that, uh, that they take, um, from the Spike damage. But, yeah, um, Linus makes the right play to go for a pump there, get a lot of damage on the Skarmory. But, Blissey's in here to take 25% from the Spike, which is going to hurt him more. Um, but he could also just, you know, recovery or get the recovery off as well. So he does go for the recovery here to get the soft blow going. So t -tar comes in, takes a lot of spike damage there. Um, so now what could happen here is that Linus can switch out and go into Skarmory. And he does do that. But Focus Punch is coming in and Focus, and Focus Punch is going to do a pretty good chunk to the, uh, to the Skarm. So the fact he revealed Focus Punch could mean that this t -tar is a 4 attacking variant or it could be Sub Boa. Um, but... The focus punch there was pretty raw, and he does go for it again on the phasing. So that was a good play, again, on Tiger's part to get even more damage on Skarmory. And now with Pert coming in here, um, he can, you know, attack him. But before he does that, Linus goes for the Toxic goes for the toxic to wear down the Pert. So that was a good play. Showing Surf means that this Pert could be, like, a Mono Pert. So Mono Pert could definitely be very dangerous to, uh, to Linus's team. 
because he doesn't really care about toxic and also um with the spikes down too, toxic plus like phasing from uh from perk or actually i don't think this I'm, i don't really remember if mono perk runs phasing a lot i don't think they really do let me just check again to be sure <laughs> oh man i think they do um so let's use surf defensive um nah they don't so um hold up wrong game so he gets over you know refreshed to get rid of the toxic or he just or he just like a uh, toxic back um and i do think he goes for that um but let's see um no he switches there and goes venusaur so venusaur is pretty interesting um goes for a pump there on the switch um but it misses of course um granted the pump would have been nice but i don't think it really i don't think it really would have mattered this venusaur is actually gonna be threatening to uh, linus because uh now what venusaur can do is just sleep whatever it wants to and he can't really do much about it um so he is gonna let Gengar go to sleep to the uh, to the sleep powder, but he misses. So this is actually pretty huge uh, because this means that now Linus can potentially uh, get rid of a Mon right now, or he could go for like a burn on something. Um, so let's see what Linus goes for. Um, he could also burn the uh, Venus or two, or just Ice Punch it if he has it. Um, so he does go for a Fire Punch. It does not knock him out, but the uh, but the sleep powder is gonna come down. So this Venusaur is very bulky. Um, and now with this being slept, he could also lead to two to get even more recovery back. So he is gonna do just that. So now, um, Taiga is getting a lot more recovery back. Or he's getting some recovery back. Um, on top of the lead, on top of lead seed as well. So now Jolteon comes in here on the lead seed or on the lead seed of Gar as Gar is still here, um, being slept. And lead seed plus the lefties is gonna come and bring the Jolteon right back up to almost full. And comes Tar to just get sacked to Thunderbolt as he can't really do much. But he goes for the baton pass instead, which was a really good play, um, which does allow uh, Ty to get to still gain momentum, or I mean, is to continuously get momentum here. So. Unfortunately, Linus is going to have to let this Tar go, as not only is his perk faster, but also Tar is just not useful. Goes for the goes for the refresh there, goes for an Earthquake from the Burn Tar, so yeah. Um, this Tar is really not going to be doing much here, um, as Earthquake does nothing, and he can just surf it and kill it. So, um, he goes for a Toxic, actually. Toxic was pretty interesting. I don't know why he made that play. I'm actually curious about why Taiga made that play to Toxic there. Maybe he thought that Pert would come back in, um, but... I think in I think in Linus's like in Linus's position, all he can really do is go for is go for damage or just phase. So I think Taiga might have made a misplay here. Um, regardless, it doesn't really bring him back that much because he can still get some momentum anyway. Um, so he is gonna uh, force that out, and in comes Jolt. So now he's gonna let the Jolt go or let the uh, Tar go to Jolt. So he is gonna sack the uh, the Tar here to the Thunderbolt. Um, and now what he can do is bring in Blissey. So Blissey's gonna come in here. It has to come in here. <laughs> this is only switching. Uh, Blissey's actually pretty, like, can actually be pretty, like, decent against most of his team anyway, especially with the spike down, too, and Taiga has no way to, uh, remove hazards, while Linus, I believe, might have one Mon to remove it on his team, um, which hasn't been revealed yet, and it is gonna be revealed now, which is Starmie. Now, this play right here, I don't agree with. I don't think he should've went hard Starmie here on Blissey. Um, in my opinion, I think he should've just recovered with Blissey. Because when Blissey comes back in, it's going to be at almost, like, 30%. That is not good. <laughs> that is not good. Especially when Blissey can wall, or can kind of wall uh, Venusaur plus Moltres. Kind of. Not, like, well, but it can kind of take it on. Um, so, I think in Linus's like, position, you should have just recovered there. But with Starmie coming in here, um, it does mean that... This that the Jolteon could either like but can either Thunderbolt again or it could just you know or, I mean it's kind of forced a baton pass anyway. Um he does go for it. So um so I mean yeah he does remove I mean, yeah he does um excuse me, yeah he does bring in or does bring in the um or does baton pass or brings in the Starmie on the baton pass, but I don't know. I feel like he didn't need to do that. Just in my opinion anyway. Um but uh, anyway, Starmie's in here on Skarmory, and he could just face this thing if he wants to, or just spin right here. Goes for a pump instead. Um, I think pump is fine. Um, like, he doesn't lose too much, honestly. Um, but I think it would have been better just because, you know, getting rid of a spike is just good. Like, like getting rid of those spikes is good for him, because that means that Blizzy could, that Blizzy could always come in on Jolteon without fearing, without fearing, without fearing the, uh, hazards. Um... So I think it would have been smarter for him to go Blissey or to stay just staying with Blissey and just recover. Um, 
and he still had like fire blast left he could still like fire blast through um through venusaur and even through skarmory so i don't think it was that necessary you know i don't think he should have done it um i i think i definitely think he should have recovered um but uh I guess maybe he was fearing if it was like taunt or something on Skarmory. Maybe it could. It actually could be taunt since he's running like a Jolt Spike team. Um, so it could have been taunt on Skarmory, but uh, but most likely it was, it was just going to be toxic. Um, but yeah, this Starmie is going to die now. The Thunderbolt, or he has to go Blissey to take the Thunderbolt, and that's still not going to be that good for uh for uh for linus so he's gonna baton pass instead on the predict on the switching into uh or just to, yeah just a baton pass again anyway um case you way to go gengar go blissey so so a good play um but blissey definitely would have been better but still um i think with potentially fire blast or overheat i think it would have actually killed blissey um especially with the sand chip so fire blast is gonna come down it's gonna miss the gengar though um, if Linus can wake up his Gengar, he can still Thunderbolt it and just get some damage on Moltres. But, um, for, well, actually, he does wake up. Gets the Thunderbolt off. Does a really good chunk. Um, but the Fire Blast will come down and it will knock him out after sand damage. So there goes Gengar there. Um, getting the damage off on, getting that damage off on Moltres is huge. Um, because now that means that what he could do is bring in Starmie now and he could spin if he wants to. Um, or I, I really think he should go Starmie. I think, I honestly think Starmie was, is the better option here because Starmie puts pressure on one, two, three. Well, not really this one, but definitely puts pressure on everything else here. So I think Starmie is a mon he should really be conserving and making sure that he keeps this thing um, as an offensive presence against Tiger's team. And what he does here is he actually does do just that. He does bring Starmie in here and he goes for the Ice Beam. I don't like that play. I don't think he actually had spin now that I look at it or now, now that it's like playing out. I feel like maybe he didn't have spin. It, it might have just been modest army, which is, which really isn't that great, you know. Um. Yeah, I feel like he was in spin. I really don't think he was spin. But if he was spin, I don't know. No, if if he was spin. Hmm. I don't think Ice Beam was a bad play, but I'm just trying to think. He could have spun a lot earlier with Starmie. Like, I think he had some, I think he had some, like, turns to spin early. Um, he probably could have even done it on the Pert, too. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think he actually had it. Now that I look at it. Pump, Ice Beam. He had to have Recovery. But he has Thunderbolt on Gengar, so I don't know. Pump Ice Beam. I think he had to have recovery, you know. I think he had to have spin and recovery. Um, but yeah, Moltres is gonna drop there. In comes Tar, and I can just pump this thing if he wants to. He actually has to land it too for it to kill. So he has to land the pump, and he has to kill it here. He goes for the spin there. That was a horrible play. That I don't like that play. He spun right there. That's not a good play. That's not a good play. Um. Like, he he had the option to do that a lot earlier. Like, I, I really don't like that play he made there. Um, I do think Linus should have just went for the damage. He was already, like, he was getting momentum right there. Like, he could have just pumped the, he could have just pumped the tar. And I think pump would have killed tar. Um, because in case you don't know, in ADV and, or I mean in, in, um, in ADV and below that, uh, sand does not boost rock types. So that means that T-Tar doesn't get like a boost from the sand, which means that pump will kill um, from that range. Um, it will always kill from that range. I really think he messed up here going for the spin there. And now he's going to pay the price with the rocks like coming down. And they go Starmie. Um, I'm really curious about why he made that play exactly. I really think if he just kept the Starmie, he would have had a much better shot here. Because again, the spikes down, just pressure everything here too. And Tar definitely would have dropped a pump. Um, so now with this in mind, Perk can still, you know, put some pressure on him, but the tar is actually faster though. If he was HP grass, he would have done it. But yeah, there goes the Jolt, so Jolt's gonna die there. Um, and now in comes Venusaur, and Venusaur is going to be faster, which means that this could go to sleep. And he is gonna let the Blissey uh get slept, but he goes for Giga Drain instead, so he's gonna get a lot of recovery off that. 
And now he can just put this to sleep if he wants to. But even if he does, the Blissey can just switch back out and, you know, avoid the sleep. So he just lets the uh, Pert go to sleep instead. So now with Pert being slept and Blissey being here with Fire Blast plus whatever else it has, um, can't really do too much. And also with that Leech Seed on Blissey, that means that he can just recover off that damage. And it'll be almost up to 60. Yeah, because <laughs> Leech Seed brings, like, just helps it so much. And then comes Tar. On the soft boiled, it's just not looking good for Linus right here. So this is pretty much going to be a wrap right now. I really think his only misplay was to star me. Like I, I genuinely think that was his only misplay. If he didn't, um, if he didn't spin on the on the tar and just went for the damage there, it definitely would have been in Linus's favor. I think, um, right here. But um, but it's okay. It's okay. He didn't play bad at all. Like he played very well. Uh, throughout this match, Protect comes down. Let's see who's faster. It is going to be his own perk. It's going to be uh, uh, Tiger's perk. Surf will come down and kill out the perk. And Blizzy can, can, can uh, come in here, but even it's still not going to really help that much because you know, like you can just toxic this and that's going to be over. And Ice Beam won't even kill it. So here comes Toxic. He lands it too, and that is going to be the game as he gives Protect stall. And Blizzy can't switch out. So yeah, that is going to be the game. Like I said, I think they both played well. Again, Taiga played a lot better, um, just in preserving his um, just in the way how he preserved Jolteon. Again, pivoting around with it, um, making sure that it get that doesn't get worn down too fast. Um, and also he played Moltres very well too. Like Moltres definitely um put on a lot of pr like put a lot of pressure on this kind of team. Like Moltres in general, uh, can deal with can deal with defensive teams like these because um with Sand Chip as well, uh, plus with support from like Burn. And or I mean with sand chip plus spike plus spikes from the uh, from pert as well or from skarmory, um, with burning things as well, um, Moltres can be very threatening to uh, to teams like these because once these mons get worn down by spikes or like get or get burned, um, then Moltres can just do whatever it wants. <laughs> like his team definitely struggled in Moltres. It, it struggled immensely with Moltres, um, or tremendously with Moltres. I do think that if he went Starmie a lot sooner, um, he probably could have played around Moltres a lot better here. But again, it's all a learning experience from from playing this uh this from playing this tournament or just playing like old or just playing or just getting into old gens. Um, it's all about you know learning and just uh gaining the experience from these uh from these games. Um, again, that's kind of why I wanted to do this tournament. I wanted to I wanted to do this tournament in my Discord just to. Just to see, like, who was who was really interested in playing ADV, and just to like, just to, just to see how these games would actually like go, like how these games would actually play out too. Um, granted, um, I do have some pretty competent players in my Discord that are very good in ADV, so I kind of expected some games like these. Like, I was I was pretty happy about about how these uh, how these games came out though. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be that for this uh, for this review. Um, I will be doing some, I will be recording some matches for round two and just, and just get my thoughts about round two. Uh, round two, it's kind of weird because there's only five players, but basically, um, basically it's, there's going to be two matches and then one of those matches will have the outlier, uh, play the winner of one of those matches. So, um, so yeah, that's what's going to go down. Um, so yeah, so I will see you guys in uh, for round two of my ADV tournament. Um, so yeah, so if you guys did enjoy, uh, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord Bushido Gang, and subscribe for some more content on the channel. Also, follow me on my Poke Amino and check out my Smogarn profile. All those links will be down in the description. Be safe, wash your hands, and have a happy new year. Peace out.